You are listening to the Fancy Free Podcast, where my guests and I tell our most embarrassing funny stories so that we all feel less alone in our imperfections and forge connection through vulnerability and humor. I'm Joanne Jarrett, and I'm your host, and today I have with me a fellow podcaster, Dana Trimborn. Dana is the host of the Big Dane podcast. She lives in the Philly Burbs, about 30 minutes away from Center City, Philadelphia. Day to day, she works at a healthcare advertising agency in account management. The company is based in New York City, but she's 100% remote, so she does not have to commute. Outside of work in the podcast, she enjoys being active. She plays co ed softball with friends and plays tennis as well. Dana, thank you so much for being with me today. Hi, Joanne. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited to be a part of your podcast. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome. It's fun. Well, what did I miss about who you are and what you do? I live with my boyfriend. So him and I live together here in Conshohocken, Kanchi for short, and we each have a cat. Oh, what are your cat's names? My cat, her name is Moo. <laughs> like a cow. And his cat's name is Lydia. (laughs) That's such a serious name for a cat. I love it. I know. Yeah. (laughs) When Matt adopted Lydia, he just kept the name that, you know, they had already had named her by. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Whereas I changed her name because it was Angelfish. (laughs) That's a bit of a mouthful. (laughs) Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 we're gonna, well, I'll come up with something. (laughs) I like to have my own names. I have to rename everything too. I get that. Yeah. I have a girlfriend who has a cat named Maria. And I was like, are you kidding? Who names a cat Maria? She's like, oh yeah, that's just the name that the cat came with from the pound. And I was like, I want to (laughs) rename that cat so fast. But it actually is kind of funny. I mean, Maria is a very serious name for a cat too. It's very serious. Like (laughs) an Italian little cat is what I'm picturing. Lydia and Maria need office jobs next to each other and wear (laughs) spectacles, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, Well, let's get to know you a little better with your rapid fire questions. What's the weirdest thing? in your purse fake mustaches <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you might want to whip out one of those yeah, and go like, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly I had left it in there and I kind of forgot it was in there and then I was trying to find chapstick and I'm like what the heck is this fuzzy like, thing <laughs> in my purse that's hilarious <laughs> and I was like I love it. oh my gosh I forgot I had these in there there for a birthday party so Um, yeah that is weird that's awesome I love it Uh, okay what's the scariest thing you've ever done for fun back in 2019 my boyfriend and I went out to Denver for vacation and we really wanted to zip line and I'm like a little scared of heights so for me Mm -hmm. this was a big deal it's major it sounds so fun so I'm like well I'll just mentally prepare So I have an older brother and, you know, growing up as kids, he really made me tough and he's like, no, you can do it. And and so I have him in the back of my mind saying like, (laughs) you got it, you got it. (laughs) And then we did the whole zip lining and I don't know how many feet up, but it was so high. And then they even had you do extra fun courses where you're stepping across a small bridge, so to speak. Like a little ropes course type thing. Yeah. And people are running across. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I cannot. I was like taking like one step at a time. You're like, you don't value your life. What are yeah. you doing, people? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is the most amazing thing you've ever won? I feel like I never win anything, <laughs> like no raffles, no nothing. And I was at a work event, our vendor was treating us and they were doing a little raffle and they, you know, they're calling out the numbers. I'm looking at my ticket. I was like, oh my gosh, this is mine. <laughs> and it was Beats by Dr. Dre, the wireless what? headphones. So this, yeah. That's a high like, value prize. Right? Like this is Seriously. expensive. So this was about six years ago. So, and funny enough, just the other weekend, I was taking them out of my gym bag and I saw the part that wraps around your ear was turned the other way. And I was like, oh, well, that's weird. Like, let me just turn it back. Well, it snapped. (laughs) Dang it. They served you well for six years though. Yeah. So I need to get some new ones. It's Christmas time. Put it on your wish list. Exactly. (laughs) Wow, that's a really good thing to win. I'm actually going to an auction later today and they have a ton of door prizes. So I'm like, yes, I'm going to win something. But I'm an optimist. So I'm always surprised when I don't win. I'm like, are you kidding me? I didn't win anything. What the (laughs) heck? (laughs) Yeah, right. Like, how did I not get anything? (laughs) Yeah, seriously. Okay. 
What TV show are you hooked on or what's been your favorite binge watch? Manifest. It was on Netflix. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. I'm not. I'm good. Essentially, it's a set of passengers. The plane gets lost and then they come back and then it's five years later. I was like, wow, this is kind of interesting. Before when I was reading it, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like it kind of sounded like Lost if you yeah, saw that. Yeah, yep, yep. And I'm like, well, it has to be different, right? So I gave it a try and then I just binged watch it. Okay, what is your best feature? I would say, other than my bubble butt, my hair. I have pretty thick hair. Nice. It's very, it's healthy. And then I think, could I be a hair model? Probably not, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Actually, I just got it done too. I got the the balayage. What's balayage? It's a different technique of kind of like painting instead of like foils, but it, and it's more like a natural way. So it doesn't start at the root and then like a little bit further down and then just like a natural highlight. Okay. I'm looking at your picture now and that is gorgeous hair. Wow. You're really lucky. I'm like, dang, she's right. That is good hair. (laughs) Thank you, mom and dad. (laughs) Exactly. Sometimes the genetics, they line up just right. (laughs) Well, as you know, the point of this podcast is to share our embarrassing stories so the listeners remember that they're not the only ones that this stuff happens to and that they can see how connections are made when they share their stories with other people. So what do you have for us today? I'm going to take you back to around 2015 when I was still newly single and trying to get back out there. And I was coming off about a five-year relationship. So I'm like, wow, how do I do this? I was working in King of Prussia. I don't know if that name sounds familiar to anyone. I have heard of King of Prussia Mall. Exactly. So I had worked there, down the street from there rather, at a company for about five years. And the company itself was in a building with other companies, naturally. So every time I went into work, I would pass this one company on the right. And it was called Tom James. I'm like, Tom James, like, what the heck is this? And every time I passed, I would see all these men, I don't think even at the time I saw like any women there. So it like seems like a little odd to me, but they're dressed very nicely. They were all in suits. Golly. And I'm like, what goes on here? A coworker of mine, somehow we got, we start chatting about the company next door. She's like, oh yeah, I was in a pinch. I had to get my pants tailored. So I just went there. I was like, oh, is that what they do? And then they sell suits. I would see them kind of go back and forth, like out to their car and like back into the office. So they would like have clients to travel to. It was like a high end. Yeah. Fancy. So I'm like, wow, all these men are like pretty good looking. Maybe mm-hmm. I can, you know, get someone's number. So one evening, uh, they have a gym, a small gym in the building there. So I was finishing up there. I was walking out and I'm a fast walker. So I was like, oh, I better slow down because I (laughs) see the guy that I kind of want to talk to. And he seems to be wrapping up work and like was about to leave. And so then he sees me in kind of like the lobby area there. And we start chatting. And then he's like, hey, um, do you want to go to Guppy's? And and Guppy's is a, a restaurant bar where we live. Very cool spot. And he's like, yeah, do you want to go there for dinner? I was like, sure. Like, I don't have anything going on. Mind you, I'm in workout clothes. And I'm sweaty. (laughs) Exactly. But okay. (laughs) Like, if you say so. So we go over, have a good time, good conversation. And even split our meal together, eating wise, not the cost. Uh (laughs) Yeah, you shared a meal. That's kind of romantic. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, this is nice. And then we exchange numbers. So I'm like, okay, cool. And then a week or so later, he texts me and was like, oh, I'm going to do a workout in the gym after work. Some kind of P90X video, like high intense, mm-hmm. right? So I'm like, sure, let's do it. I'm very competitive. So I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> So we're in there, we're working out, uh, we're about halfway through. Doesn't he start talking about his girlfriend? What? Yes. (laughs) 
he said something like, oh, yeah, my on the way going out girlfriend. Oh, my. I was like, what are you even saying right now? Uh-huh. Like, wait, are you putting me in in the in the holding room? Like, y- yeah. Like, gosh. Rude. It was very bizarre. And then I totally blacked out of what he was saying after that because <laughs> uh-huh. I just was in shock. Yeah. And I almost felt like in a movie where they do like a slow zoom in <laughs> on the character. Yeah. And they mute the audio. And your heart's like, thump, thump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is this really happening? Like, I cannot believe what is going on right now. I was speechless. <laughs> I figured, well, I'm going to, like, I don't know how long he's going to be at this company for. Like, I'm going to run into him. Ugh. I just was the bear person and didn't really say a whole lot. And, you know, that was it. Like, I didn't know what else to do. Exit stage left, never talk to him again, but you definitely are going to lock eyes at awkward moments because right. you work right next door to each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then even after that, I would see him in the gym and then he brought in his girlfriend. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> You're like, sister, we need to talk. <laughs> right? I'm like, you don't have no idea. At the time, I think I was like maybe 25 and I think he was in his early 30s and I think she was older than him so it was like a very interesting dynamic but and and she didn't work in the building and you you weren't supposed to like bring anyone into the gym oh I thought you know what I could do right now I could go right down to the owner and yep rat him out rat him out kick out the girlfriend see ya oh my gosh the nerve of that guy good lord once I was talking to him more, like throughout, you know, all the gym times, I was getting a sense that maybe he could be gay and then just didn't come out yet. I thought, are you sure you like women? Or hmm. I don't know. But, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But it was just something I thought. There's something off. Right. There's something I can't. There's some distance that you were sensing. Exactly. And you just weren't sure what it was. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, you need to start listening to your instincts for sure. Cause they're, they were spot on. I mean, yeah. almost <laughs> basically yeah. he was unavailable, but for a different reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what a, quite a creep. I know earlier this fall, there was some little fun fast and I definitely had passed him like on the street, but I didn't say hi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, you're, oh, you're still here. You know, <laughs> There's that creep. <laughs> it's good that you've got your man now and you're you're happy yes. and settled down. <laughs> For sure. <Aww. laughs> yeah. You got Moo and Lydia, your cat babies. So. I know. My friend. Oh, so yeah, cute. So sweet. The dating world back yeah, then. Yeah, it is. And it's so hard. I have a 16 and an 18 year old daughter. And the 18 year old is unattached at the moment, which is fine. She's happy, but she wants to eventually have a life partner and watching her do that. I, I never realized how hard that was going to be. Like when I was going through it and my parents were watching me go through it, I didn't think at all about their emotions about it. But now I'm like, Oh, yeah. that must've been Rocky for them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Geez, it's just so hard to see your daughter or your child or any loved one really give their heart away and then have it given back, you know, and even if it's the right thing, you're like, oh, that must hurt so much. Like, not that you gave your heart away, but you just, you put yourself out there and this yeah. guy did not, you know, didn't handle the situation properly and that makes no. me mad. And dating, it was really exhausting. And to think mm-hmm. like after five years and you hit the reset button, it's like, <sighs> oh my gosh, this is what's out there. This is what's going on. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I am discouraged. <laughs> <laughs> more every day <laughs> yeah so, where did you meet your prince charming online nice. coffee meets bagel coffee bagel is that a is coffee. that a dating thing coffee meets bagel yeah coffee, coffee meets sure bagel well that's cute <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was 2018 and i would go like on six months of, of the dating apps and i'd go off six months you know it's just like tiring yeah the way it was set up you had today's bagel <laughs> it's just kind of like the first section. And so like, for me, it would be five or 10 men. And then, you know, if I saw someone, you know, I'm attracted to, I could see if they had liked me. And then if I tapped 
like, then it'd be like an instant connection. So then it opens up a little chat room where you can get to know them a little bit better and go from there. Now, the interesting part was they had this separate section. I believe it was called Discovery or Discover. And this is where the beans came in because (laughs) they gave you maybe to start off with 300 or 400 beans, which sounds like a lot. Well, if you find someone else that you're interested in and you can like read like some of their profile and interests, you have to use your beans. It's going to sound weird, but to buy, to buy the person. (laughs) Oh, Oh my gosh. And sometimes if I was like, wow, I just wasted 300 beans on this guy. He didn't even like me back. (laughs) Dang it. Yeah. (laughs) The only way to get more beans and some of these things I already did. So I was like, shoot, like, Uh, yeah. I was like, I already followed you on Facebook. I already followed you know, Coffee Meets Bagel uh, company. I shared with a friend, you know, I'm like, I'm not (laughs) going to pay for beans. I only use free beans. (laughs) Yeah. If I want to pay, I'll go on eHarmony, but I'm not. Right. (laughs) So we met on there and it was one of the instant connections. So it opened up right away. And I didn't think anything of it only because I was going to Europe and I was going to be there for two weeks. So I thought... Well, we'll see what happens, but I guess this probably won't work out because if you miss that window of mm, time, they're moving on. Yeah, it's like see you, bye. We'll see you never. They moved to the day old bagel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stale bagel, uh-huh. cold coffee. <laughs> yeah, and so we end up exchanging numbers before I left. So then when I got back, I texted him and said, "Hey, when are we meeting?" Up? Nice. And then he set everything up and got a reservation. Um, was at a Mexican restaurant locally. That's the story. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. I yeah, love it. So I'm happy nice. for you. You Thank deserve you. that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's time to talk about life hacks. Do you have a quick life hack to share? I kind of discovered it during quarantine, and I had wanted to make Moscow mules. Love them. (laughs) Yes. We were ordering a lot of stuff to get delivered to the house, you know, trying to avoid going to the grocery store. And I ordered ginger seltzer. So I was like, okay, cool. Got the ginger seltzer. No problem. Because I thought, how am I, where am I going to get ginger beer? If Who makes ginger seltzer? It was the 365 brand of Whole Foods. So I was like, wow, I've never seen this at all. Let me try it. And then... I had ginger tea. Now, I really enjoy ginger. So there's only like one brand that I really, really like and discovered the Yogi brand of ginger tea. If people, you know, are organic, which for me, it doesn't really matter, but this happens to be organic. Okay. And really spicy. So you brew that, get that set aside. In the meantime, you can get everything else together, your lime, your simple syrup, which is very easy to make and vodka. And then I got the ginger seltzer. So I was like, oh my gosh, I can totally just now take the cooled ginger tea and then mix it in the cocktail shaker with everything else. That's brilliant. Yeah. And it came out honestly, like pretty good. Well, I will link to both of those products. I like ginger too, so I'm going to try both of those. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. What is one surprising thing about you that nobody would know just by looking? I have IBS. I know it's not really like a fun fact, but... <laughs> this is the type of thing that comes out usually, and I yeah. I want people to remember that you don't know stuff like this when you just look at someone who you think has it all together and doesn't have any it's, problems, you know? It's true, yeah. yeah. IBS is irritable bowel syndrome for listeners that don't know. Yes, thank you, Joy. Yeah. About 10 years ago, when I was like 21, all of a sudden I was starting to have these issues. So I start tracking everything and my mom has IBS. Well, I feel like they don't really know if it's hereditary. I was like, it has to be hereditary. So then as the years went on, I did like an elimination diet that helped to an extent. And then actually just last year, I did the FODMAP diet to see what else was going on. 
I actually I ended up getting a, a colonoscopy too because I just wanted to to make sure and colon cancer runs on my dad's side. So, you know, can't hurt to go. No. And I think some people are are scared of getting like a colonoscopy and there's really there's nothing to be scared of. The worst part is drinking the, the um, prep. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the FODMAP diet, that really helped. It really kind of opened my eyes a bit. What is that? Spell that for me. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, okay. So F as in food. Oh, uh uh-huh. O, D as in dog. And then MAP. So M-A-P. Okay. So FODMAP. Interesting. Okay. I will link to an introduction to that too. So initially when I first did the elimination diet, I knew I couldn't really tolerate any cruciferous vegetables. It's tough because I'm really not a picky eater at all. Like I love, love everything. Yeah. So you just have to avoid it based on your willpower. Ah, oh, shoot. Exactly. And this time around with the FODMAPs, I realized I had a sensitivity to honey. But then it's thinking about what else is in that category. Oh, okay. It did help. Yeah. You know, listeners remember that there's stuff like this going on under the surface for a lot of people. All right. Well, tell the listeners where they can find you online. I am on Facebook and Instagram at the Big Dane Podcast. And I just came out with some merch. So if you want some cool swag, it is all there on the link tree to check out. I will definitely link to that. And what are you most excited about that's coming up in your future? I recently recorded an episode with my hairstylist on hair trends. So for any women out there that want to see what's in and what's not, um, we had a lot of fun. Be sure to check it out. All right. If that is already out by the time this episode comes out, I'll link to it. If not, then you just need to follow the Big Dane podcast so that you can get that when it comes out. Okay. Well, Dana, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for being with me. Of course. Thank you so much for having me, Joanne. I had such a fun time and I look forward to listening to more of your episodes. Oh, well, thank you. Right back at you. All right. Well, if you're currently in the situation of dating, let Dana's story make you feel better about any snafus that are occurring. Dating is so hard. Just take this as a tight mama squeeze from me about being in that situation. Make sure to go to the show notes at fancyfreepodcast.com slash episode 134 to find all of the links that we discussed in today's show. And make sure you follow the Fancy Free Podcast wherever you're listening so that new episodes pop into your feed each week. And we will have our break for the holidays. And then we will be back on January 12th with the Bad Date compilation. And then we'll be off and running with season six. If you want more laughter, sharing, and connection, join the Fancy Free Facebook group. We have so much fun over there. It's our private little slice of the internet where only fancy free listeners are able to see what you say and we tell each other more personal stuff, more embarrassing stuff, tips, all kinds of fun things. Dash over to Shelfie Shop at S-H-E-L-F-I-E-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. It is still not too late to order something for a loved one for Christmas. They will forever love you for getting them the best pajamas on the planet. And if you use the code Fancy Free, you will have free shipping and I will bend over backwards to get it to you in time. Have a wonderful week and remember, no one is as fancy as they look. Mm